eased, laughed, and opened another bottle of wine. When the maestro's second movement of the fifth symphony, symphony played, John was visibly moved. I observed him in the soft glow of the candlelight. I was seeing facets of this lovely man I hadn't known were there. The differences in our styles, instead of creating disharmony, were actually complementing each other. At the end of the evening, I invited him to join us for Thanksgiving dinner. John encircled me with his long arms, smiled down at me, and said, yes. Then he kissed me, warmly, sweetly, sexily. Well, that was the beginning of an almost instant and very passionate love affair. But it was about to be interrupted. Weeks ago, I had decided I couldn't wait around for Mr. Wonderful. I had to live my life. <laughs> the kids would be with their father this Christmas, and I had never had a real vacation. I booked first class tickets to Hawaii, and with my friend Diana, rented a condo right on the beach. Mr. Wonderful was just going to have to find me. <laughs> as connected as I suddenly felt to John, I was not going to bail on Diana or change my plans. On December 30, 23rd, I celebrated an early Christmas with my children. We went to dinner, as in, out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we came back, opened piles of presents. As they left to go to their dad's house, snowflakes were starting to fall. John came over later that night. He had met my kids, but it was too soon to introduce him as a sleepover friend. The, nope. game, the game plan was that I would have special time with my children. He would arrive afterward and spend the night, then drive Diane and me to the airport in the morning. I turned the alarm off minutes before it rang, slipped quietly out of bed, took a shower, then looked out the window, or tried to. <laughs> Every window of my first floor condo had mounds of snow piled high against it. The doors, too. <laughs> it was the Christmas blizzard of 1982 in Denver. <laughs> Nobody was going anywhere. Overnight, traffic in the entire city had vanished, vanished. Stapleton Airport was closed and would not be reopening soon. Passengers on the last flights to land during the night had been stuck for hours on the tarmac. Pilots couldn't locate the gates. Cars were abandoned on the road, emergency vehicles lodged precariously in small mountains of snow. Neighbors who had barely known each other spent Christmas together instead of with their families. The great city of Denver had ground to a halt. John and I were magically cubbyholed for the next few days, endlessly talking and laughing, keeping the fire aglow both in the fireplace and in ourselves. Music played softly in the background. We split a pork chop for Christmas dinner. That was all I had left in the freezer. It was enough. New love was filling both of us. I snuggled deeper into the wonderful plush robe John had given me for Christmas and sighed. It was the most romantic two days I had ever known. Put away your telescope, my inner sense has said to me. Mr. Wonderful, Mr. All that you had ever hoped for is right before your eyes. Days after we dug ourselves out of the snowbanks, John was still there. Then he chose not to leave, ever. We married in May, nine days after my 40th birthday. And just like in the storybooks, we lived and continued to live happily ever after. The love of John, his innate kindness, loyalty, and laughter, his integrity, unfailing caring, and his beauty. For the love of John, my life has been transformed. Not because he healed me, he did not, I did that. But through my life with him, I have had the opportunity to experience life and love the way it was always meant to be. For the love of John, my heart sings forever with gratitude.